We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears wherever you are on this beautiful planet we call Earth. Want to say hello to, uh, and remind everybody that you can check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. It's time once again for a little Dave 101. Now, when I started Dave 101 just a few weeks ago, I told everybody how I hate ufology, how I hate it these days, you know, the monotony, the news, the the different tribes that are all kind of coming together and blasting and beating the hell out of everyone verbally on Twitter and other social media platforms. And I will tell you this, I'm glad I stepped away. I'm glad I stepped away. Why? Because I feel like I can breathe again. I feel like I can have that outsider's perspective of what is going on without the daily diatribe and mishmash of the BS that is currently out there and the debates that continue to go on and on and on ad nauseum. Let me tell you this. It is something of a relief for me to be able to say, I don't care about ufology anymore. I really don't. Why? Well, as we talk tonight about the egos, the narrative with Bryce Abel, you will see that even some of the best investigators in this field like Bryce are having the same attitude about it. This was proof in the pudding that other people are actually getting sick of it as well. Because if I don't agree with your opinion or you don't agree with my opinion, immediately you are a jerk and someone that needs to be put down all the way to the point of trying to get you banned from your show, banned from your networks, banned from everywhere. We want to shoot each other until we are all done and dead in the field of ufology. There is no break unless you decide yourself to step away. So somebody asked me the other day, they said, Dave, why do you want to step away from UFOs when your show is about UFOs? Well, it's about a lot of topics. We just like the weird and strange. But it's the anger in the people that have really turned me off. People accusing others of being liars about their experiences, not just me. Liars about their programming, liars about their listenership, liars about everything. It's tough to take. The majority of people in this field who are broadcasting to you this news, whether it's UFO videos, whether it's podcasts, whether it's research from MUFON or whomever, there's always got to be someone who tries to bring you down. A great example of this is MUFON. I know people on MUFON's board of directors. I know people who are MUFON investigators. And apparently one dirty duck makes a whole team. That's the way we're supposed to think in today's, oh my goodness, type of world. I can't believe that. Look at that. Cancel culture. Okay, when Jan Harzan did his thing, and decided that he was going to try and pick up young girls as the head of MUFON using MUFON's computers. Immediately, everybody targeted MUFON as almost like a pedophile-type outfit. Not true. Not true at all. I remember talking to one member who was almost in tears because they couldn't believe that this was happening. 
That's one. That's an example. All right. We want to always seem to kill one each of, of each other here in this field. For what? What is the purpose? What is the purpose of raking a, an experiencer over the coals because you do not like what they said? Then people will say, well, aren't you doing that to Angeli? No, I think Angeli needs a lot of questions asked. And canceling interviews at the last minute is not one way to do that. It's just a tiring field of rhetoric that is going nowhere because the minute you bring up something logical, the illogical jump all over you. It wears you thin. It tires you out. It brings off stress. And then you look at yourself and you wonder, is this even worth it? What am I doing here? If people can't see the UFO narrative for what it is, one of the successful parts of this entire narrative has been to tear this community apart. A once proud, beautiful community filled with woo, filled with incredible stories that has turned into going for the jugular on everybody. We see it with Travis Walton and Mike Rogers, where now after 40 years, Walton is a liar. So some say. I still believe his story. I still believe the fact that he passed a number of lie detector tests. I see good people dropping out of the field, like my friend Eric Cooper from Forest Moon Paranormal, because after 20 years, he's had enough of the BS, enough of the lies, enough of the, of the stealing and a lack of camaraderie. Where we should be pumping people up, we are trying to tear their walls down. And it's not fun. And it's a decision to back away from ufology and the, the deep part of it that I am really enjoying these days. I'm very much enjoying it. It's tiring because we're not allowed to believe anybody. And if you back somebody and their experiences or you back somebody in their research, you become a target now in this industry. And I'm done with being a target. I'm done with, with the drama that happens. Look, there's always going to be people who talk poorly of you or ill of you. That happens. But we're done with being targets for talking about topics that we love. Talking about stories that we love. We need to get back to understanding that whether you like it or not, those who have had some major really cool experiences, whether it's Betty and Barney Hill, whether it's Travis Walton, whether it's Calvin Parker, whether it's Samantha Mowat, Chris Bledsoe, and his entire family, they have a place here. They are allowed to have a place. What we see on social media, not all the time, but some of the time, is rather disgusting. The personal attacks, the accusations, and usually the people who are saying this have absolutely no proof. All right? It's like the age-old argument where if I came out and say, the sky is blue, but somebody's like, aha, caught you, you missed the cloud in the east. The sky's not blue, it's cloudy as well. Caught you, you missed it, you're lying. The sky is not blue. It is both sun and clouds today. Bottom line, we're always looking to try and push people off that ledge. We rip people from making money off their books. We rip people for taking in conferences. We rip people for getting opportunities, even though their credentials don't hold the weight that they are being given the opportunity for. As we said with Bryce, we have a community of, of people who just make up a title and decide that that's what they are. Fake scientists, fake journalists, fake researchers. 
fake demonologists and the paranormal. We've seen it all. There are some brilliant, brilliant minds in this community, from professional journalists to professional scientists to professional researchers. And unfortunately, for some reason in UFOs, that isn't good enough anymore. It's not good enough. And it makes me question whether or not we truly, truly want disclosure, whether we truly want to know the answers to the questions that we have even deserve it, considering how we treat the entire community. Look, I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal. I've fallen for the drama as well. And Lord knows that I've hashed out some of the drama by calling out people for lying about their credentials over time. I do that to try and protect my listeners from fake information. I don't want our spaced out radio listeners quoting people who lie that they're a scientist or quoting people who lie that they're a journalist or quoting people who are absolutely ripping the shreds out of experiencers or officials. It's not what we're about. We're better than that. This is a better community than what we are giving ourselves credit to. And more importantly, it's a better community than the way we are acting. Social media has become a war zone for ufology. It really has. People defending people who have criminal records, people exploiting people for information and using it as their own, people lying about their own stories in order to get that contact or get on that interview with that radio show or podcast or YouTube channel. We see it every day. How do we make it better? We make it better by you, the listener, tuning in and looking for the quality. It's not about the quantity out there. It's about the quality. What resonates with you? You, the listener, are the ones who can control all of this and turn it around. How? If you know somebody has a, that is, is doing what isn't good for ufology, stop supporting them. Stop supporting the negativity. Stop supporting the, the bitchiness of this community. Can I say that on the radio? Sure. We're going to get away with that one tonight. Because there is a lot of good information out there that people are working diligently on to bring to you if you listen and if you know where to look. Keep your eyes open but keep your ears open wider because we want to get that information out to you. But this should be enjoyable as well. For the majority of people out here, they want that information out. They don't care how they get it. And some of them, it's very successful. I look at somebody like Nicole Sackage, who is a brilliant, brilliant researcher for Grant Cameron and on her own always vetting her sources, always vetting her information. That's what we need to go for. Those who are credible in this field. But unfortunately, what we are seeing today, especially on social media, from YouTube to UFO Twitter, we are seeing the worst of the worst. Because if I disagree with you and you disagree with me, now you have to cut me down and insult me. And the fact that the majority of people, especially on UFO Twitter, who hide behind four or five or eight different profiles, the attacks just keep coming. Not just on me, on others as well. It's daily. It's rampant. It's disgusting. To clean up this field, it starts with the listeners, those who are like the people in our chat room tonight or listening to this show, who are just going to have enough of the BS. Well, then you say, well, how do I find out what's BS and what's not? Real easy. Real easy. Go with your gut. Go with that feeling inside. You know what's best for you. You know what's right for you. If it's insultive, 
if it's antagonizing, it probably isn't the right information. And do your homework on people. Check their resumes. It's easy to tell that Bob McGuire, Dr. Science Bob, worked at Virginia Tech University. It's easy to know that Richard Dolan was a university professor in history. It's easy to tell by listening to Bryce Zabel or Ross Coulthart that they are professional journalists. That's where it comes down to. When you feed the anger, when you feed the hate, it only makes the fire bigger. Or you can help be a part of extinguishing it. That is your Dave 101 for the day. Thank you so much for listening to me. Get right to it. Get down and dirty. And we'll do it all again next week. Now it's time for the Newswire. Shirky Poo, what do you got for us?